Hey everybody, I'm Sean Hilton, and today we're at Comics Cubed in the heart of downtown Kokomo on Geek Street. Today we're going to review a few books that we've had a chance to check out. They'll be available tomorrow, March 3rd, 2020. Stop on by Comics Cubed if you see something you like, or call us up, hit us up on Facebook, and we can reserve them for you. First up on our hit list is from Image Comics, the new book called Mercy. Mercy number one. Give me mercy. Um, or, well, I won't give it to you, but I'd sell it to you for $3.99. If you were a subscriber, I'd give you a 10% discount on this particular book. This is one of those books where it's Mirka Andolfa, I believe, Italian, and uh, one-man band, writing it, drawing it, doing the whole thing. It is, a, am sure, a labor of love. Beautiful looking book. Absolutely gorgeous interiors, great covers, several variants available, all of them looking really, really nice. The story itself, we're looking at a period piece in uh, kind of a nondescript time of somewhere probably around the 1800s or so, and murder, mystery, maybe monsters, it looks like. As the first issue goes, a lot of depth to it. I had a lot of hope for this one, thought it was going to be the big book, and it's good, which I think is pretty solid all the way around. But it wasn't great. It didn't take me to that next level. It was missing a little something. It's got a lot going on in it. Uh, there, there is some great looking mysterious style characters. There's a story that is intriguing. There's some different things going on that will draw you into it. But uh, And compared to other books that just don't have enough happening in the first issue, there's a lot going on. So you know what? It might have just been me being a little hard on it. Because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, man, it's really got a lot of value uh, for this book. It's a long book. You're getting a lot in the first issue. It looks great. The things that are happening, there's two or three different things that are going on that are going to intrigue a reader. Um, it's got a little bit of a horror Cthulhu-esque kind of an element to it. Uh, I think we throw on the Cthulhu-esque uh, title quite a bit. So we'll just say it's got a horror period piece, 1800s kind of feel. There is one spot of nudity and sex in here. So... For the younger readers, we're, uh, we're probably going to have to say, unless you're incredibly mature and can handle that sort of thing, pass on it. If you are anybody over the age of 18, though, think this could be a really good addition, at least well worth picking up the first two issues. I like the first issue quite a bit. We'll see how it goes with the second issue. That'll be kind of the telling thing. By the time you get to three or four, we're far enough in to know how the series is going to go. But overall, a very solid uh, debut issue. Next up from Oni Press, Dryad Number 1 by Curtis Weeby and team. Curtis Weeby is uh, known for his take on Rat Queens from Image, but pretty much dissolved the whole team that he was working with, uh, broke up the Rat Queens uh, bandwagon, and this is the first creator-owned thing he's done in a little while. So people who've been waiting for a fix from this particular creator are going to get it with Dryad Number 1. Got to say, out of all the books I read this week, uh, this is probably the one to go for, for a brand new book if you're into a fantasy style element, but with uh, more down to earth kind of a feel. So you're looking at kind of a D&D-esque fantasy setting with amazing art by Justin Osterling and uh, family is on their way to find this uh, hidden valley situation come across it and then take up their lives there, find themselves there for years, uh, becoming uh, a little, one of, one of them is taken with it and one of them is a little forlorn from the home that they've already left. But overall, this really was probably my go-to book of the week. Great art, interesting story, enough stuff going on again the first issue that uh, really engrosses a reader, captures your imagination, sets up enough things for the further series that keeps you going. Overall, this is probably one of the better crafted books I've read this week, especially for a number one from, you know, something that's not the big two. Not that they're guaranteed to give you a great book ever, but, um, you know, sometimes with some of these other books, you're eh, a little unsure what you're going to get. This time we got uh, a really, really good read. So I would highly recommend checking out Dryad number one. Hey, Strange Adventures, number one, DC Comics. Tom King is getting together with Mitch Gerard, and they are telling us a new take on everybody's favorite sci-fi space traveler. Homo Zan, Zeta Beams, Adam Strange is back, 
and this time we're looking at a black label book. So instead of your standard DC fare, this very well could be similar to the Mr. Miracle thing that uh, Tom did, as well as um, the Martian Manhunter series that just, uh, I believe, just wound up. Kind of a deconstructionist, more adult take on these. This one definitely has that feeling of a more adult version, yet this one seems very grounded in the history of all the things that make Adam Strange, Adam Strange. All the things that we've known about him, the classic costume is there, the uh, Zeta beams, him traveling and all that stuff's there, but of course now we mix it in with a modern sense of the war that he was fighting and how those things have affected his life. Now he's, uh, it seems like he's lost the war, they've lost the planet, and him and his wife have made it back to Earth where he is uh, coming to grips with what happened during the war, He's written a biography. He's on a book signing tour. So this uh, style that we've seen from DC is kind of their real world take on fantastical events. And it was, uh, it was very intriguing. They got this as ages 17 plus. And other than one very, uh, very tame sex scene, which is uh, like one panel, it all shouted out. I would say that uh, maybe there's some language because I hate to say it, I just, language kind of just flows right in out of me. So uh, I thought uh, Tom King really uh, brought something to this one. I wasn't that impressed with Martian Manhunter, and I love Mr. Miracle, but the angst and all of that in Mr. Miracle, that's what Mr. Miracle is not about for me. So finally, I'm seeing one of the three takes of this kind of new way of looking at some of these older characters. And this one worked for me, doing uh, the war aspect and how it affected him and different things coming out about it. That has been pretty intriguing, and uh, I liked it quite a bit. I would have to say this one is pretty high up there. Marvel number one, Alex Ross bringing the vision to the Marvel Universe that, according to what we're reading on the inside of these things and other um, promotional materials, is the vision that he originally had when he did Marvels back in the 90s with Kurt Busiak. This is gonna tell you three different stories, three different styles of art, and three different um, times, basically, in the Marvel Universe. The Alex Ross story is only a couple of pages long, absolutely beautiful. His work just stands so, stands the test of time. He, his stuff is gorgeous, and it's interesting to take on Nightmare. He's the bookend. He begins it, he ends it. The second story is a Spider-Man story that's done in an art style and, uh, and a format that's just a little out there for me. Luckily, this is the perfect kind of book where we're getting three or four stories in each one to try out those things to see if it's something you're gonna dig. For me, it was a pass on the Spider-Man story, but that's followed up by a Kurt Busiek, Steve Root, Avengers Hulk-based story that I loved. It's classic. It's got a Kirby, Stan Lee feeling to it. Steve Root artwork is perfect. And then it's followed up by the Alex Ross finishing piece with a little bit of a twist ending. High quality stuff. It's a great read, and at $4.99, I would say it's, uh, it's it, three ninety nine would have been better. $4.99, still a pretty good deal. Hey, from Image Comics, we've got the crossover that nobody ever asked for. It's Outer Darkness meets Chew. Had a lot of fun with Chew over its 60-issue run. Great stuff, a lot of fun. I have not had quite the same uh, results with Outer Darkness. That one's been science fiction mixed, mixed with religion and horror. It's a very strange little mix, and I'm sure it's working, and some people are loving it. It was nice to get back to see Chew again. That's a really fun, funky little story that ended up being a little sci-fi involved, but overall was just so quirky and different. Unfortunately, mixing the two flavors together, it works in the book, but overall, it's just a little strange. However, for lovers of Outer Darkness who just want some more fix, it's going to be great. For people who miss Chew, this is going to be perfect. For somebody who's not familiar with either, I don't know that this is the jumping on point for you. And we followed up with three books that are not number ones, that are ongoing books that I think uh, I read that I think you know you might want to know a little about. First, we've got Conan, The Battle for the Serpent Crown. Number two, it is Conan in the Modern World, which originally was kind of a cool concept. Brought him into Savage Avengers, and it was working. This is kind of Conan doing a Conan story and just in the middle of Vegas doing a robbery. They've thrown Black Cat into this issue, and she plays really just 
she's the typical character that's in and out and is basically, you know, the MacGuffin, uh, hey, you got it? Nope, now you don't kind of thing. And it's, it's, I'm feeling that we've just got a little too much Conan right now. There's a lot of Conan options. I don't know that this is your best one. I really wanted to like it. It's okay. Next up, Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom number six. I love this book. The fact that more people aren't reading Dr. Doom hurts my soul. This is like the perfect comic. Great art, great story, lots going on. Doom on the run. Every mercenary in the world looking to get him and uh, take him in. Heroes on the lookout for him. Interesting different heroes popping up. He's got this strange relationship with Kang the Conqueror. Uh, his world is falling apart. His country is being stormed. He is not having a good day and they are making the very best of this comic right now. Highly, highly recommend Dr. Doom. And last but not least, my favorite X book up to number nine, because they're putting these things out very frequently, <laughs> Marauders number nine, White Queen, the uh, Kate Pride, Bishop, Pyro, Iceman, Storm, all in a team. Uh, pirates who are out there basically sailing the seas, getting mutants to the mutant... Uh, world a uh, continent of Krakoa where they'll all be safe a lot of stuff going on in there a lot of uh, this issue is really cool very funny but also has a little twist of some poignant stuff here and there they are all over the place I think it's Jerry Dugan doing this and I gotta say I have been incredibly impressed with his take on Marauders well worth checking out if you're gonna read one X-Men book that's not X-Men this is the one that I would highly recommend there's a lot going on, and it is well worth checking out. That's it.